Coming up on We Talk News This Week, the fallout from True Leaves dispensary closings in California and Massachusetts. New York's glut of cannabis is starting to make their natives restless. And the NBA continues to be the most progressive professional sports league towards cannabis, and they won't be testing for it anymore. Meanwhile, Major League Baseball welcomes its second CBD company as a sponsor, and that safe banking vote could happen before the end of this month. All that and cannabis reports from coast to coast on We Talk News with Elena Pinto next. We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm Elena Pinto. We start in the foreign land of Colombia, where legalization of cannabis could become a reality before the end of this month. This week, a Senate committee voted 15 to 4 in favor of a legalization bill that has now passed seven of eight steps before it heads to that country's president to sign it into law. The movement in Colombia is designed to halt the illegal market controlled by organized crime in that country and could relieve some of the overcrowding that country's prisons. Their president, Gustavo Petro, appeared before the United Nations last year and urged other nations to change their policies toward cannabis prohibition. Now, it looks like his country could make the bold step of legalization. And back here in the U.S., the New York market continues to slowly emerge. But there are plenty of people who are losing patience with the slow rollout, especially with the glut of product that has been grown but can't make it to the existing dispensaries. Pam Schmiel has more from the Big Apple. I'm Pam Schmiel, host of the Mary Jane Society podcast with the New York Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. The New York Office of Cannabis Management is in big trouble with those trying to launch a legal cannabis business here in New York State. The other night at a town hall style meeting, they were heckled and booed over their lack of transparency and accountability in the rollout. And because New York farmers are sitting on tons of unsold weed because not enough dispensaries are opening, the state is allowing them to sell at pop-up events like farmers markets, concerts, or other similar venues that don't serve alcohol. And lastly, New York has promised to approve new licenses that are not social equity applicants by September to get more dispensaries open and get this industry off the ground. That's this week's New York City Cannabis Report. I'm Pam Schmiel from the Mary Jane Society podcast, reporting for Weed Talk News. Out West in Oregon, a conflict of interest of a former state official's involvement with a cannabis company has piqued the interest of a federal investigation. Alibi Cannabis's Marianne Kursaji has more from that state. I'm Marianne from Alibi with this week's Oregon Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. The fallout from the Lamoda tax scandal continues to spread. Now, federal investigators are issuing subpoenas to gather more information about the consulting agreement with the former Oregon Secretary of State, Shamia Fagan, and the disgraced cannabis retail chain, Lamoda. Also, the new aspergillus testing requirements continue to wreak havoc among cultivators. Labs are reporting lower volume of tests on flour as farmers reduce the number of plants in production and move more product to processors. That'll do it for the Oregon Report this week. I'm Marianne with Alibi for Weed Talk News. True Leave is a publicly traded cannabis dispensary that is the dominant brand in Florida. This past week, that multi-state operator announced that it would close one dispensary in California and all three in the Bay State of Massachusetts. PCM founder Jimmy Young discussed this development with Chris Ferrone, the author of the weekly talking joint memo in our Massachusetts Cannabis Report, sponsored by Holyoke Cannabis. Were you surprised, Chris, that Trulieve 
decided to close all their Massachusetts locations? Uh, very much so. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, not because I wasn't aware of what was going on and, and certainly labor issues and, and, and workers organizing and, and all sorts of troubles on multiple fronts. But, you know, we've seen a million times a, an easy rebrand. Uh, but, you know, I think the issues are deeper. And as we're, you know, learning more and more and we're seeing why it happened now. But yes, of course, I was surprised because most consumers, you know, not, no offense to them. Don't, you know, I know that the informed ones aren't watching. They're not. The informed ones are watching your show, but the majority of people, they don't know, they don't care. They're looking for the cheapest or the highest tack. And I understand that. I'm not here to to insult those people, but uh, I, certainly corporations and branding operations have a ways around this. But I guess this was a little too deep. Yeah. And, and I wonder how much the uh, issue they had with the employee at the beginning of the year who uh, breathed the keef dust and ended up having a reaction to that. Uh, how much of a factor did that you think that made in this decision for True Leaf? Well, I mean, I think that was the factor that led to, you know, OSHA investigations. I can't, the, you know, another federal, uh, you know, basically impugnments of the operation. And listen, I, I don't want to speculate. I don't know what they were expecting. I don't know what they're trying to dodge. But it certainly appears to have had uh, had an impact because, like I said, if it if it's just kind of, you know, that people are you know, hating on the brand, truly have also kind of been getting, uh, in a, and I got to say, I, I can't stand the, whether it's an MSO or a small, everybody, your weed sucks, your weed sucks, but truly certainly has been slapped with the mids label and, you know, Wiz Khalifa, who is one of their, you know, big, big hip hop artists, um, uh, who they, who they, they do his brand. He's caught some flack on social media and, but you know, that, like I said, that they, they could have just fixed all that like, like this also listen, truly is one of those brands that when I'm in some other States, it's like, Oh my God, you drive every 10 minutes and you see a, a true leave dispensary. They certainly not to give them an out here, but they certainly have other business in play. So maybe it just wasn't worth it. But there's one thing, you know, we can't complain about MSOs only caring about the bottom line and then complain when they only care about the bottom line. Uh, <laughs> that's what, that's what they do. And, and certainly there were calculations made. Uh, I know a lot of people wish they, you know, stayed and faced the music, uh, I, I certainly, you know, that there's the kind of that thing, like if you're if you're in an elevator that just broke last week, it's probably not going to break again this week. I think when there's some hell to pay and, and some accountability, not that there's, I think, been enough necessarily for somebody dying. But when there when there are when things like that happen, uh, I think, you know, we can look at the what's coming and say, oh, this might be positive. Maybe there are changes being made, et cetera. Uh, now we won't really necessarily know. It seems that maybe uh, I think. I think one thing we can look at is maybe Massachusetts is a state that a big MSO that doesn't really want to play ball is, is maybe a little bit more afraid of. Bay State Cannabis Report is supported by Holyoke Cannabis, Holyoke's finest cannabis recreational experience. The publicly traded cannabis stock market continues to be volatile and Doug Miller keeps an eye on that and whether it is a good time to look at some stocks that are underperforming. Here's Doug's High on Wall Street report. I'm Doug Miller from High on Wall Street with this week's cannabis stock report for Weed Talk News. Let's start with New Jersey cannabis news because the CRC revoked the cultivating and manufacturing licenses for Harmony Foundation. They said they owe $700,000 for those licenses. Now, Harmony has to purchase from other cultivators and manufacturers in New Jersey that they can sell in their dispensary because they still have that one license. And now for our cannabis stock news. Red, White & Bloom is acquiring Alifia. Red, White & Bloom plans to provide $17.5 million in credit facility to Alifia, and they also plan to sign $30 million in credit facility of their own. Now, Red, White & Bloom shareholders will own 76% of this combined company, and that's this week's Cannabis Stock Report. Reporting for Weed Talk News, I'm Doug Miller. In New Jersey... For one year, social equity applicants will get the opportunity to apply for licenses without any competition from others. 
And this is an attempt to give those most negatively affected by the failed war on drugs the opportunity to get into the industry. Joe Goldsbury has more in our Garden State Cannabis Report. Hi, everyone. I'm Jill for We Talk News New Jersey, and here's what's happening in New Jersey cannabis. Well, it looks like New Jersey is finally taking some action to boost social equity in the, mar- in the marijuana market in our state. The ca- recently, the Cannabis Regulatory Commission uh, took a significant step towards promoting social equity in the, marijuana mar- in the marijuana market. Starting this September 27th for about one year, the commission will exclusively consider applications for certain licenses from social equity applicants. Uh, This was directly from the New Jersey Monitor, and this initiative aims to increase the representation of individuals with prior marijuana convictions and those residing in economically disadvantaged areas. Uh, Commissioner Charles Barker emphasized the need to address the inequities that have been caused by the drug war to ensure that these businesses, which have faced obstacles, can thrive. And also, this could also be a result of the state taking a step because there's been so much social equity pushback in the state and they've heard so much complaints about it. But it's nice to see that they're finally taking steps to make corrections in that area. In other news, I'm just back from the CWCB Expo where we met with some incredible female founders in the Women's Pavilion. I spoke directly to the director of Community for Women Grow, Tanya Osborne, which sponsored the Women's Pavilion this year at the CWCB Expo. I work for Women Grow, I'm the director of Community, and um, we helped build out this pavilion of women and brands. So I think we selected like 20 of five women and brands to be here today. So so, come to the CWCB Expo, to come to the pavilion, and let's find out more about Women Grow at womengrow.com. And I want to give a shout out to the nice folks over at Flower City. Thanks so much for the swag and the sweatshirt for the OG hoodie. I appreciate it. That's all for now for We Talk News New Jersey. I'm Jill Goldsberry and thanks for watching. Arizona's legal cannabis market has been operating pretty smoothly since it opened last year. And now that state's Court of Appeals is ruling that some past cannabis convictions are eligible for expungement. Karen Black has more from Arizona. I'm Karen Black from Greenfinger Consulting. Welcome to the Arizona Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. The Arizona Court of Appeals recently ruled that some previously, previously excluded cannabis convictions are eligible for expungement under Prop 207, which legalized adult use. State versus Thornton reversed a, an earlier ruling from Maricopa County Superior Court judge that denied expungement for Ethan Thomas Thornton, who was arrested and convicted in 2014 for possession of 18 grams of marijuana. Originally a felony, the charges were later reduced to a misdemeanor. The state successfully argued, and the judge agreed, the statutorily undefined term possession is open to more than one reasonable interpretation. The ruling will likely affect others incarcerated on similar charges. Arizonans are benefiting from some exciting new products. Several new types of Wana brands, cannabis infused gummies, are now available throughout the state, including Wana Quick Fast Acting Gummy and Wana Optimal Fast Asleep. Early Arizonan entrants and once beleaguered Bake Brothers recently announced the debut of its new Happy, Stony, and Sleepy collections. Each line is curated to evoke specific effects according to their name, and some proceeds from each go to nonprofit organizations with which the company is aligned. Baked Brothers is offering a BOGO discount to military veterans on its new product. Canna Friends Phoenix is scheduled to hold its monthly networking event June 14th at the Canna Friendly Clarendon Hotel downtown. The Tucson meeting is scheduled for June 22nd at the historic Bates Mansion. For more information and tickets, check out azcannafriends.com. Arizonans would like to wish the legendary Steve D'Angelo a happy birthday. The father of legalized cannabis and founder of The Last Prisoner Project from 65 on June 12th. That's it for this week's Arizona Cannabis Report. I'm Karen Black from Greenfinger Consulting, reporting for Weed Talk News.
In 2012, Washington State joined Colorado as the nation's first two states to legalize adult use sales of cannabis. Both of those states allowed cities and towns to opt out of allowing cannabis retail operations from setting up. While many other legal states have followed the same path, including New York and Massachusetts, now in Washington, a city that had opted out is opting back in. After 10 years, Pasco, Washington, a city of about 80,000 people and their town council voted five to three to open up retail for adult use this week. Canada may have been the first G7 nation to federally legalize the sale and use of cannabis by adults. And now one of their provinces has decided to change access rules and security measures. Debbie Facey has more on this strange development from Saskatchewan. Hi, this is Debbie Facey with We Talk News with your Canadian Talk of the Week. For the last week, we had the Lyft Conference here in Toronto, Ontario, which went off with a hitch. And before that, I would want to say before that, sorry, prior to that a week in Alberta, we had the Girl Conference. So here in Canada, we've been having more of the conferences, such as when it comes to really big news. But this week, what we do have is Saskatchewan making the decision that they are going to no longer require any sort of I don't want to say documentation, but any sort of ID when it comes to addressing or stating the fact that you are of age to use cannabis. Also, they're not going to be utilizing or having to have any sort of cameras when it comes to their security or theft processes at the end of the night or throughout the day. This is something that Saskatchewan, as the province in themselves, have decided to do. No other provinces have discussed this at this moment, and I'm not too sure if it is going to be something that is going to be implemented. At this point in time, I do have to say, let's just see what happens. But going forward, I do hope that we do keep those security in place just for not only the butt tenders, but for the community as well. What we also have in Canada is New Brunswick has put in a request for a third party to start handling the distribution and the management of the cannabis in New Brunswick. At the moment, the Cannabis Management Corporation, CMC, is the ones that are responsible for the distribution, but at the moment they are looking for a third party that is going to be able to not only handle, but store the goods. So there is gonna be a smooth sailing when it comes to handling, shipping, and getting to our consumers hands. This is Debbie Facey with We Talk News, your Canadian correspondent with this week's talk. And finally tonight, with the NBA Finals being played out in Colorado and in Florida, the new collective bargaining agreement between the players and the owners is ready to be ratified for the next seven years. In that agreement, the league has decided to not test for cannabis anymore. That league has already given its veterans and current players the green light to look at investments in the CBD and cannabis industry, and now the players won't have to worry about failing a drug test for weed. And that's it for this week's Weed Talk News. I'm Elena Pinto. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. It's a whole new world of weed out there, isn't it? Everyone is learning new ways to titrate, ingest, consume, imbibe, and engage with this plant medicine we call cannabis. Hi, I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media and the host of In the Weeds. And once in a while, the really live business cannabis talk show we call Green Rush on Friday afternoons from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern. I've been a medical patient in Massachusetts for almost 10 years now. I remember my first trip to a dispensary just outside of Boston, and I told the bud tender I didn't want to smoke it anymore. So I tried edibles, then tinctures, then vaping. And now if I'm going to smoke, I only use the Weejits filtration system. What? The Weejits.com, Weejits, that's weed, W-E-E-D, G-E-T-S.com, is where you'll find the planet's coolest product both cool the smoke from 1300 degrees to just 90 into your lungs plus the maze pipe and pre-roll filters get rid of all the gunk that you just don't want in your lungs if you can help it 
add in the code of PCMTV and you get 15% off. So just go to Weejits.com and check out the best way to enjoy a cooler smoke with less coughing and hacking and more peace of mind. All that resin and tar is collected in the polyurethane filters that are easy to clean with soap, water, and a few Q-tips. Your lungs will thank you, and so will I. We are a cultivation through to consumption lifestyle brand for the cannabis industry. Of course, the crown jewel in our product line is the Armoire Home Grow System. So now with Green Goddess Supply, we can take you everywhere from growing it in the Armoire right through to storing it, consuming it, rolling it, storing it, you name it, A to Z. Our goal is to enable everybody and anybody anywhere to be able to produce their own organic flower quickly, easily, discreetly, and inexpensively. You would think that it is. However, there's quite a bit of debate right now in the accounting industry when it relates to cannabis with this exact question. Um, I'm part of a few different networking groups that are solely accountants for cannabis companies. And there's been quite a bit of back and forth in those communities and discussion regarding whether 280E, if it went away, if, if the administration legalized cannabis or took it off of schedule one what would happen and it could go either way right now the debate is it can make the accountant's life much easier uh, that's what a lot of the inexperienced accountants are saying right now it seems whereas the accountants that have been in this industry for a while and have, and have gone through the same thing that happened with hemp a few years ago are saying that it'll actually will make lives more difficult because when hemp became declassified a while back, the accounting became more complicated. Sativa Labs in Westfield is fast becoming the number one testing lab for cannabis in Western Massachusetts. Safetiva understands the importance for accurate on-time test results for your product. That's why their current compliance panel turnaround time is less than two days. That's Safetiva Labs in Westfield. For more information, go to safetiva.com. The Vermont Cannabis Report is supported by another Green Mountain business, Canatrol, winner of High Times Best Dry Cure System. Check them out at canatrols.com. The Vermont Cannabis Report is supported by another Green Mountain business, Canatrol, winner of High Times Best Dry Cure System. Check them out at canatrols.com. Brandon Jones, Missouri Cannabis Report is brought to you by Baker Brands, a curated B2B marketplace for head shops and dispensaries. 